Welcome to the Windermere Podcast. We talk about martial arts, self-defense, and a whole lot more. And now your host, Will Demir. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 23 of the podcast, where we talk about martial arts, self-defense, and a whole lot more. I've got several things to talk about today. I've got some updates for you, and then we're going to talk about my next instructional video on basic self-defense. And in the end, we'll do a little bit of a, a Q&A. But first of all, as you know, this podcast is made possible by the support of all my patrons over at Patreon. And I uh, want to say a uh, big thanks to Jason Apollo Cook, who has been with me for a while now on Patreon. And, and we've interacted several times on Facebook throughout the years. So just a shout out to Jason. Thanks a lot for your support, man. I appreciate it. If you also want to join the fun and games we have on my Patreon page, Go to patreon.com forward slash Wim de Mere, my name, and then you can uh, join us there at whatever level uh, of rewards that you want to you wanna join us at. So totally up to you. We've got a lot of choice there. And I, and I calculated it recently, and I think we're at about almost 130 hours of videos, of instructional videos and, and Q&A and uh, finance analysis. So loads and loads of stuff over there. Obviously, there's also the newsletter. So... If you want to support the podcast and are interested in uh, digging a little bit deeper in the topics we we discuss here, join us there. So that was it. Um, Moving on to the first topic, which is some updates. What's due? Well, speaking of Patreon, um, I had a huge surprise recently. Out of the blue, somebody contacted me and said, hey, Wim, I've got a surprise for you. I want to send you a, a video camera because I noticed that that was one of the goals that you have with uh, with Patreon, and he said, "I want to send you uh, an excellent camera. It's a it's a, a Panasonic Lumix 4K video uh, capability camera." And uh, I was floored. Obviously, I thought it was a joke at first, but nope. We mailed back and forth a little bit, and it turned out that that was not a joke. So um, one of the goals that I had with Patreon was indeed that is is buying with funding of Patreon a, a really good vi- a camera so that I can actually make decent pictures for my upcoming books and so on, and also be able to shoot uh, at high quality videos for instructional videos and so on. So um, we have that covered now out of the blue. So the the generous benefactor, he asked to remain anonymous, so I'm not going to mention his name. Uh, but again, a huge thanks to you, Mr. Anonymous. Uh, I appreciate it a lot. And obviously, all you guys will be able to, to enjoy that too. Because that means that um, the quality of the pictures of my books will obviously get a lot better. So it's a really cool camera and it shoots great pictures. But also the video capability of, of shooting in ultra high definition, which is something that I wanted to do for a little while. Um, that makes that makes it a little bit easier for me as well to start making uh, instructional videos again like I used to do for Palette Impress. And that is something that I've been trying to get back into. But the biggest issue is um, all the equipment that you need for a really good video shoot. It, it's quite expensive. So um, the biggest issue was obviously a camera. And well, I, I have that now. So what I did is um, test it out a little bit, shot my first 4, 4K video and, and showed it to my patrons and it turned out great. It's going to be a little bit of a challenge to get the editing done because 4K video files are huge. They are incredibly huge. It's uh, for about an hour's worth of 4K video, you, you should you can, you're easily get to 40, 45, even 50 gigabytes for one video file. So that that's pretty big, um, which creates a few other uh, hurdles. But um, I'm not going to talk about that here. The main point is to let you guys know that I will be. Um, making another instructional video. I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes. So the video shoot is scheduled for in about two weeks. And um, I actually also, thanks to my patrons, was able to buy wireless lavalier mic. And if you don't know what a lavalier mic is, again, I'll put a a link in the show notes to uh, so you can see the camera that I have now and the microphones that I'm going to use. It's it's a small microphones that you see people wear on their lapels or uh, on their shirts. it's a very small camera, but it needs to be wireless because, well, <laughs> it's hard to show self-defense techniques if I've got cables uh, coming out of the back of my of my T-shirt. So uh, I got that. 
it worked great did a few tests with it it worked really well i think the sound quality is going to be excellent so that means that i'm pretty much set and uh, i'm busy writing the script right now so uh, i'll explain that in a little bit when i talk about basic solo fans but um i'm really looking forward to it because it's been a while since i shot that type of instructional video last time was uh, with paladin present i think that's about five years ago so um i know a lot of people have been asking me when will you do that again well there you are so that's uh coming up in a few weeks i hope to have that one available very soon afterwards and i'll explain that in a bit so that was a again a huge surprise getting that camera it, uh, it's incredibly uh, generous of mr anonymous and uh, i appreciate it a lot so i'm looking forward to everything that i can uh, that i will be able to do with that camera and uh, you guys will again <laughs> you, you i think you'll enjoy it too so that's it what else is new well i actually am uh, um, a little bit better prepared this time for for getting everything on track again with the podcast uh, as um, meaning i want to avoid delays so i already interviewed the guest for the next podcast which will come out in about two weeks that's professor drew anderson he's a friend of mine he's a professor in psychology but he he works he he did martial arts he worked as a bouncer um he um he's a firefighter emt and i mean guy, guy has a really interesting background obviously is uh very well um, very much up to date regarding everything that has to do with psychology and in particular we talked a little bit about uh, trauma ptsd building resilience uh he has a special program to help people uh, concentrate and focus via relaxation methods and so on, which is really effective when it comes to uh, anything to do with martial arts and self defense. Uh, it's one of the things that I've used as well uh, for my own training. So I can very much recommend that. And that's going to come out in about two weeks. So be sure to tune in for, for that podcast. So that's pretty much it for the updates. And then moving on to the main topic that I want to discuss. And that's a, a program called Basic Self-Defense. Um, it's it's an originally, it was created by another instructor. And uh, he asked me to help develop it uh, a few years later after he started with it. Um, we worked on it for many, many years. And it went into a certain direction that I really liked. I think it's a really great program. And um, eventually, we went our separate ways. He changed it into something very different from what I do today. I made adaptations throughout the years, small ones, big ones, and so on. So it's very different from what it originally was. But um, I think it's a really interesting program because it works well. Why? Well, a bunch of reasons. Uh, why do I call it basic self-defense? Well, it's meant to be... Uh, taught to the average person to handle the average situation uh, that has anything to do with self-defense and violence. So it's a general tool. It's not a specialized one. Now, you, you can adapt it to a certain degree, but it isn't meant to be a solution for the exceptions to the rule. For instance, if you're a very small person and you, you have to go up against a really tall and large guy, so there's a, there's a disproportion um, in size and strength and, and so on, well, then you're probably going to need a specialized solution uh, that that is not the goal of basic self-defense as a program. What is the goal is to help the average person. And that's pretty much the majority of the people out there. So the, the average Joe, the average Jane who wants to learn self-defense and um, is not interested in martial arts or, you know, taking a long time to study, practicing years before they get to a level of uh, proficiency. That's the opposite of what we want with basic self-defense. Now, the assumption for that program is that it's going to be trained, uh, taught, sorry, to an untrained person. So somebody who has no training, we start from scratch, and that person needs to be effective as fast as we can possibly make them. So there's no 10 years of training in martial arts before they get anywhere. It needs to be pretty fast. Now, the goal of the program is to offer the best uh, bang for buck in that regard. So what, what I try to do is, is construct it in such, such a way that it gives you um, the least amount of training time needed, 
to yield the highest possible results so you can adequately defend yourself in, in the most common self-defense situations. So that is the goal of the program. Now, to be able to do that, we, we need to make quick progress because we're starting from scratch. That is very often um, a very attainable goal because somebody who doesn't have a background also doesn't have to unlearn certain things or he doesn't have previous training uh, that, that, that always wants to get in the way, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But if, you, if you've if you been practicing martial arts for a long time and you want to learn a very different one, that can be quite a challenge. So it, I wouldn't say that it's impossible. It's just that if you already have previous training, then there's, there's going to be several things that you find in basic self-defense you already know. However, if you start from scratch, we need to teach you everything. Now, that means that we, we don't want to lose time in low percentage um, scenarios, things that obviously could happen, but are unlikely to happen. So we focus on the most common attacks, the, com the most common problems the average person uh, is likely to face in a self-defense context. As a result, we, we limited the number of techniques that you learn. So there's, a, there's only a handful of techniques you need to learn, but these techniques need to be versatile. So that means that the same technique, the same movement is reused as often as possible. And that will be in different contexts, or you do a movement and the first time you learn it, it has a very specific goal and meaning. And then after a few lessons, you learn that you can also use it in a very different way, which isn't apparent at first. So we want to limit the number of techniques so that as a as the result um, of this approach is that you can then view those techniques in a different context and then reuse them as you see fit. Once you you are shown that the same movement has different as, as a potential to be something else than what it, what it was at first in your eyes, it opens up a, a lot of new possibilities. And you already learned the movement, so why not get the most out of it? So that's the first point. The second point is that every rep counts. Every repetition counts. So you want to get a maximum of repetitions in a minimum of time. So you want to get to a point where we do a lot of reps very quickly in a, in a short amount of time. You can go about this in different ways. You can, you can train for hours and hours on end every day which is great, but not everybody has that option. So what we use in this program is a very specific teaching methodology. So you follow as a student a specific path, and in the path, each component builds upon the previous one. So it's a, it's a very logical approach and a very specific approach where every technique you learn, every exercise you do, every drill you do, prepares you for, for what comes next. And this allows for faster progress. And throughout uh, the many years that I've been teaching this, I've refined this progress process and changed it and tweaked it until we have what I think now is, is a quite effective teaching methodology that most people, in my experience, can, can advance very quickly through different stages of, uh, of learning the system. And that brings me to the third point, no wasted time. So everything needs to be geared towards getting that most bang for your buck when it comes to uh, getting results as quickly as possible with the least amount of training. So that means that, that the whole uh, structure is such that we don't want to spend time on things we don't need to, and we don't want to learn the same thing twice. This goes back to the previous point of every rep counts. That means, for instance, that even the warm-up is adapted, so you're actually pre-learning and once you learn them, actually drilling techniques that you use in the actual world program. So everything has a function, everything is meant to teach you something, and everything is an opportunity to get an additional rep in. So as a result of that, what we found is that uh, the result is really rapid progress for the vast majority of people. At the same time, because the same movements come, come back over and over, there's deep ingraining of them. And then we slowly build up the intensity levels uh, so that you can obviously then practice techniques in increasingly more stressful situations, obviously ending up with uh, a full-blown scenario training where you are placed in an adrenalized state and you, you go through the adrenal dump and you have to use the techniques in that context. So it's a process, again, of, uh, of slowly bringing you 
to a level of competence which is then challenged uh, bit by bit as you get better at it. So that's the, that's the whole process that you go through. As, as far as the content itself, there's two main parts. The first part is, is a soft part and that is controlling techniques. There's not necessarily always a reason to knock somebody out when you're in a self-defense situation or when there's there's uh, somebody uh, getting in your face and so on. You don't necessarily want to beat them up so bad that uh, proverbially their mother doesn't even recognize them. So that's not always the solution. Sometimes you need to control somebody. Now the the soft techniques that that I teach they are they don't look soft. That's the that's the main thing. They look quite aggressive. However, they uh, they tend to leave very little damage, if any, which is the whole point of controlling. And then the other part of the curriculum is what we call the hard techniques, and that is meant to neutralize the attacker. The point is to put him down, put him out, uh, whether that means knocking him out or, or damaging him in the process, doesn't matter. It, it needs to end right away, and he's not getting back up again. The point is not to control him. This is obviously, obviously in situations where um, you are in extreme danger, and your life is on the line, lift force is an option, and so on. So we, we have opposite ends of the scale here. Controlling for situations where that is necessary and neutralizing when you have no other choice. I always start teaching the soft techniques first because for, the most, for most people, most civilians who live in the average Western country, that is what they are most likely to, to need. And then once they have, um, they have that down, then we go to the hard part, the neutralizing techniques which is something that I do uh, consciously because it's not just that you're most likely to need the soft techniques, but it is also an issue that it's very easy, as one of my teachers uh, told, told me very early on in my training, it's very easy to go from soft to hard, to go from controlling to beating somebody up. It is very difficult to go from hitting, uh, elbowing somebody in, in the face and kneeing him in the groin to all of a sudden relaxing and controlling. We're, we're kind of wired to keep on doing what we are doing. So if you start with the hard neutralizing techniques, it's going to be more difficult to learn the, the soft techniques, the controlling techniques. Remember, we're talking about beginners here. I'm not talking about trained professionals, people who've been training for decades. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about somebody who started from scratch, who's a, who's a blank sheet of paper, and that we're going to actually start ingraining certain techniques um, into into their subconscious mind so we want to make sure that what we ingrain is actually something that doesn't necessarily get them thrown in jail for uh, protecting themselves a little bit too much so that is that is the two main parts so hard and soft and then obviously once you you can do those and, it, and that goes relatively quickly you switch from one to the other that is part of the training where for instance you go for a controlling technique it fails something goes wrong um, the guy tries to pull a weapon, whatever, something happens and you, you can no longer uh, keep on trying to control him, then you switch to neutralizing. Further down the line, when you, you have more experience and training, then it goes the other way around. And then the training focuses on learning to go from the hard neutralizing techniques, recognizing when it is enough, and then not just stopping and dropping the guy and, and looming over him to admire your handiwork, but instead going back to more uh, controlling techniques to make sure that he doesn't get to hurt you, he doesn't get to, to get back up and attack you. However, you also keep control of the situation. So there's, there's a, a specific interaction between the two components of this system, which is something, again, you, you build that up over time, uh, but the main goal is as quickly as possible you need to be able to handle yourself, whether it's controlling or neutralizing your attacker. So that is the basic uh, part of the program. And then obviously afterwards, once you learn that, then I teach variations. The, the For instance, the hard neutralizing techniques are elbows and knee strikes in a very specific way. And then we learn to uh, adjust them a little bit if you are, for instance, a little bit uh, smaller than your opponent. Well, how do you adjust that? Well, there's there's a few ways that we can teach that. Uh, what if the elbow doesn't work? Well, there's a few variations that are biomechanically speaking pretty much the same thing, uh, and and I, I teach how to switch to those. 
So you can actually individualize the, the program a little bit and adapt it to your own personal needs. The whole idea of this program is not to see it uh, as like the best thing ever or the ultimate uh, Uber or whatever fighting system. It, it, it's just a, a systematic approach to dealing with violence and starting from a few assumptions that are very specific as I, as I explained before. And then you follow a, a specific training methodology to quickly get to a level of basic competency in self-defense. That's the whole goal. It's a starting point. It's not an end point. It, it's a, a platform that you use. And if you like it and it works for you, great. Then it's then, then with just a little bit of upkeep and a little bit of training, once you go through the initial learning phase, you can uh, stay at a decent level of competency for a very long time. Again, because of the way that it is constructed, it's there's not a lot of techniques to learn, and uh, the, the teaching approach is, is very methodical, so the, the ingraining process is very fast, and, and with a little bit of upkeep, a little bit of repetition every now and then, we get quite good results. And I've got many students who came back to me over the years and said, well, you know, I only did this once with you in a seminar, in a, in a six-hour seminar, never practiced it again, and then half a year later, I got attacked, and that's what came out. But the same thing happened to somebody that I drilled uh, that system for for a period of I think it was five six months maybe a little bit longer. Uh, every week we, we we had a one one hour training session and he was in a huge accident with his car and they found him in the defensive position that is which is the first thing that you learn um, in in the system of basic self defense. So and and many other examples that I could give of people who who out of the blue contacted me and said hey. It, it actually works. I use it. I said, well, of course, that's why I teach it. So um, the the whole goal is is that if that's all you need, fine, trade that. It's going to work. What also happens is that if for whatever reason you, you like it, but you think, well, I want to get more skilled, well, then I point to, to go into specific martial arts or self-defense systems. If you need more, go into something specific and what more often than not is the case is that people find that the basic self defense system gives them a very good um, um, foundation to learn other arts it and that is that is not by accident it is by design so the goal is that it, it is meant to be built upon it's meant to be a foundation for something else um, if you want to go further into your training and if not it is a, st a strong foundation in and of itself that will serve you well so that's the whole the whole point i've been teaching it for for over 20 years now and, and like i said lots of um great feedback over the years from students so what i'll be doing in the video shoot first is uh, the soft part so that's what i'm going to shoot first and that will be available on my streaming platform on pivot share which is where you can uh where you can buy and and watch all my Paladin Press videos and the other ones that I did. And again, I'll put a link in the show notes. And my goal is to also make it a DVD and then set it on Amazon. I'm not quite sure if that's going to work. Uh, I haven't done that before. There are technical limitations and requirements, but I'm going to try it, see if that works. And uh, for sure, it'll be available to on the streaming platform. But hopefully, I can also do it on DVD. And then once that's done, I will obviously start... Uh, planning the second video shoot which will be hard the hard part so the neutralizing techniques and then so on as time goes by um make videos of and distribute and, and sell the the following chapters which will be on learning the learning the variations and then a few other things that i have in mind that that will be useful for the program so that's it that's the the big update on uh, what i have planned next for instructional videos again all the people over the years who've asked me what what's coming next well this is it the main limitation was first my health you guys know about uh, my surgeries and so on that's pretty much squared away now so now it's a matter of logistics that was the biggest thing getting a good, good camera finding a good place to make a video getting the lighting the sound and so on lots of stuff goes on it goes into developing a decent uh, instructional video so um but we've got that pretty much squared away now as well. So I hope uh, that I can deliver that one very, very soon to you. So stay tuned. 
and um, you will automatically be notified if you join my notification list. I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes. It's just a, a web page you go to on my website and you add your email address and then you get an email from me only when I have something new out or when I do like a big discount, like for instance on my birthday every year, I do a big big discount on, uh, on my books or videos or whatever. Um, no spam. I hate spam, so I don't do that. I think last year, I think maybe I sent three to four emails in the whole year. So um, if you want to join that notification list, you know, I'll, the, the email, the page on my website, sorry, where you can add your email address, I'll put it in the show notes and just go there. So that's it for the big update on the basic self defense instructional video. I'd like to move on now to the final part, which is a Q&A. I have a question from Johan. Johan asked, uh, I just started with Muay Thai and I want to condition, condition my shin bones. There's a lot of information on the internet, but some of it seems weird. Yeah, I can imagine that. Uh, what do you think is the best method? Um, different ways I can answer this one. Uh, I'll, I'll try to keep it positive. There, there's, there's indeed a lot of nonsense on the internet on that, re- on that, on this specific topic of conditioning your shin bones. I mentioned this in my leg kick for MMA book. Uh, if you haven't, if you don't have that, I'll, again, I'll put the link in the show notes as well. But um, one of my favorite techniques is the leg kick. Uh, for that one, you need to condition your shin bones because it hurts really bad if somebody blocks it chin on shin and you have unconditioned shin bones. So what is the best way to do that? Uh, my opinion and from all the research that I've done, Mm, that that kind of supports me, it backs me up in, in what I'm going to say next. My opinion is that you need systematic and progressive hardening of the shin bones. So there's two components. First off, it needs to be systematic. That means that you kind of expect to get the same level of conditioning um, somebody gets from practicing years of hardening their shin bones only in like a matter of weeks. That's not going to happen. You need to do it regularly systematically for a long period of time so that's the first part and if you stop doing it well the results will eventually go away as well so it's not going to happen overnight but you need to be consistent you need to work on it regularly i cannot stress this enough the second part is that it needs to be progressive don't just start banging away on the hardest heavy bag you can find and kicking it at full force that is the worst thing you can do it needs to be progressive because the, the, whatever you do to harden your shin bones, that's not the main goal. That's not actually where they become uh, conditioned. It's the healing process that is involved after you stop conditioning them, where your body actually recovers from the conditioning. That's where you get the results. So you, if you don't uh, hold back in, in the beginning, if you don't do it progressively, you, you risk actually injuring yourself. Um, I don't think that's a good idea. What is the best solution, in my opinion, is work on a heavy bag. Start with a relatively soft one and then increasingly make it a harder one. I, I do not uh, advocate kicking a heavy bag filled with sand. That's like kicking a rock. Don't do it. It's stupid. Unless you like arthritis. Just don't do it. Don't. You also don't need to kick, um, I don't know, trees or poles or... Uh, walls or whatever don't don't kick, kick immo- immovable objects it's, it's stupid it's silly yes we've all seen the videos of uh, people in thailand kicking down banana trees yeah but they're soft okay it's not like kicking an oak that's that's not the same thing so don't spend time doing that use a heavy bag start slowly build it up and then um, keep at it for a long period of time and once you f- you notice that you can kick relatively hard on a relatively soft bag, fill the bag a little bit more, make it a little bit harder. Uh, what you can do is, for instance, um, if, if there's shredded, shredded cloth as, uh, as filler, well, um, make a couple of uh, small sandbags uh, in plastic. Make sure they're wrapped really tight so they cannot leak. And then add them to the bottom of the bag and then wrap, make sure that they are surrounded by the shredded cloth. Uh, so that there's a little bit more weight and density there and the weight will settle out the bottom and then you, you you kick that it's gonna be a little bit harder and you can fill your heavy bag that way if you like making making it harder along the way and as as the the bags the, the sandbag sorry settle more towards the bottom of the bag uh, what will happen is that you're going to have the bottom of the bag which is going to be really hard 
and then the middle and the higher parts of the back, which is a, it's a relatively soft. So then it's just kick a little bit higher if you want to go soft, kick a little bit lower if you want to condition more more harshly. Um, this this is typically how it's done in in Muay Thai gyms. Um, that well, the ones where people are smart actually. So that is a, a method that I think is is best. You, at the same time, you're not losing time because you're practicing your kicking techniques, your leg kicks, your body kicks, your high kicks, and so on. So so it, it's a matter of just just sticking to that routine of regularly doing this. Don't start by immediately doing this silly game that I've seen some people do. It's just no shin guards and then just kicking each other uh, with leg kicks and then the other guy blocks it with a shin and then it's trying to be the toughest guy and see how long you can do that. It's stupid. That's not how it works. The way it works is that the impact is actually causing micro fractures and this sounds scary, but you know, don't worry about it. It causes micro fractures in the shin bone and then your bones will actually heal those micro fractures with additional calcium um, that, that is um, that is formed there and that is what makes the shin stronger and more conditioned. There's also the deadening of the nerves that happens over time. Now, one thing that we do know is the more that you harden your shin bones, the more brittle they become. What that means is that there's a certain flexibility in your bones, just like with with uh, with, a, uh, with, a, with a tree branch. Um, there's a certain flexibility that is in there. Now, if you make it harder, it also becomes more brittle. This means that if it breaks, it tends to snap completely. In bones that are more flexible still, that aren't as conditioned or aren't as hardened, they, they tend to not break as, as quickly because they have more give to them, um, even, even though a, a, a full fracture is obviously always possible. But if you have well-conditioned shin bones, you have to accept that they are a little bit more brittle. Good example of that is Anderson Silva against Chris Weidman. If you remember that, Anderson Silva snapped his uh, his shin bone in half by uh, not leading, not, not setting up his leg kick correctly. He 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 he, le- he he was leading with a leg kick, no setup, no preparation, run into a knee block, and 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 that was it. And this happens a lot more often than you would uh, would think with professional fighters because they they have well conditioned shin bones normally. And uh, with that results in slightly more brittle bones. So that's it, Johan. I, I hope that's a good answer to your question. Uh, if you want to, if you want to start conditioning, like I said, start slowly. Just build it up. Do a couple of minutes, or do a couple of rounds of conditioning. Do it for both shins. Do 10, 10 kicks left, ten kicks right at a certain power level, and and then build that up. And then next week, do twenty or fifteen, whatever you want, and kick a little bit harder. And and over the period of months. You, you eventually graduate to full force and you the best way to um, know where you're at is that if you kick the bag at a certain strength level and you, you don't feel a thing, well, obviously you're conditioned to that point. Okay, kick 10% har- harder, 5 or 10% harder. What happens? Can you do that? It's fine. Good. Again, kick 5 to 10% harder. That starts to hurt a little bit. Back off a little bit. Back off about 5% and, and then start working at that level uh, non-stop so that you can condition your shins to withstand that kind of impact and then keep going until you don't feel it anymore and then keep uh, adding percentages of more power and speed until eventually you can kick full force full power at whatever level you want even if it's soft bag if it's a harder part of the heavy bag uh, if once you're fine you know that you're conditioned and then it's just all about maintenance and keep keeping it uh keeping that level of conditioning going instead of just thinking, well, I've done it, I'm done, I don't have to do it anymore. That's not really how it works. So that's it. hope you uh, you found that useful. Um, if anybody else has any other questions for Q&A, you can always contact me. The easiest way to do that is to go to my Facebook page. Very easy to find. Just type in Facebook, Wim de Meer, my name. You'll find my Facebook page and you can contact me there. Um, that's pretty much all we have for today. So as always, uh, you can find everything I talked about and the links that I mentioned in the show notes. To get the show notes, you go to wimsblog.com forward slash 23. So that's the number 23, wimsblog.com forward slash 23. And there you will find all the links that I mentioned. As always, if you want to support the show, uh, join us on Patreon. Lots of, lots of great content there. 
Uh, you can also support the show, like, uh, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you can, leave a review on iTunes or wherever you're listening to this. Uh, that always helps out a lot. Just um, And share this episode with people you think who might uh, enjoy the content that, that we have here. And if not, you guys have the next episode to look forward to. Again, like I said, Professor Drew Anderson, who will talk about PTSD and training for it and many other things which I'm pretty sure you will all find very useful for your training. Until that, I will talk to you next time. Thanks for listening to the Women's Premier Podcast. For more information, go to www.womensblog.com.